sharpening and I decided now would be a good time to show you my mining toolkit that I use when I go Herkimer diamond mining. Uh, you can see I have a uh, pretty wide assortment of chisels, all different lengths, different widths, depending on what I'm working on. Uh, a lot of these are cold chisels, they're not really made for using on stone, they're made for cutting steel bolts off and things, so they don't hold up particularly well, but I've been unable to find uh, good masonry chisels locally. Uh, I've only bought a few of them online so far. But uh, the cold chisels hold up for a while, they do break off um, a little more often than a, a masonry chisel would. would. But uh, because you're wearing your safety glasses, you uh, should be all set. Um, besides the chisels, uh, some sort of a paintbrush or something to remove loose dirt. And I have a flashlight, a pair of tweezers for getting crystals out of a, uh, a vug that you can't quite get at. And there's the file that you need to bring with you because your chisels will get dull. Um, up here, these are little pokers. Uh, each one of them has a different a different angle. You can see their general tool. Uh, they're, they're really handy. I use them for digging uh, clay-like material out of the vugs to uh, free up the crystals. Uh, a pair of gloves, safety glasses, a couple of hammers. I use almost exclusively the mini sledge. I don't use the small one very often. I just I'm comfortable with the uh, with the mini sledge. Um, my wife, on the other hand, uses this, the lighter hammer a lot more often in her kit. Uh, this device here is one of those uh, cable grippies. Again, so I can grab a stone out of some deep little hole. And underneath the gloves is a bag of Ziploc bags. Uh, you need something to bring your catches home in. Every time I get something that has a little bag full of screws or something, I just keep them. Uh, that way you can isolate them two or three stones in a bag so they're not banging into each other and things. So a big, big uh, stash of used bags is really, really handy to have. All right, so that's kind of the basic kit you would, and you don't by any means need this many chisels. Uh, I've just found that certain size chisels work better in certain situations. You could go in there with two chisels and a hammer and be absolutely fine. Uh, so this is kind of what you would you would bring. I also have some heavier tools for breaking big rocks, which I will show in a minute. When it comes to breaking bigger pieces of rock, nothing beats leverage. I mean, that's the, your only way of breaking these big huge stones apart. So what I have here is a series of wedges. Uh, in the center here is a typical wood split wedge. Uh, not really useful to start with usually because uh, it's way too wide, but it's nice after you have a few other wedges stacked up to have a nice big heavy wedge. Uh, these ones over here are varying thicknesses, a little bit bent after uh, many years of use. But, uh, so I have some really thin, really thin ones that are great for starting and some thicker ones. And in the back I have some uh, fairly that are really short. A note about using shims in general. Uh, once you get one shim pounded into the crack, you can a lot of times sneak another shim up on top of it, which is why it's nice to have different lengths. So obviously I put these in backwards, but if I put this, this shim into the, into the slot first, I'll then be able to put this one on top and it overhangs enough I can still hit it with a hammer. And uh, the, the metal on metal is very smooth, so you basically cut the friction way down when you're pounding into the rock because you're really only dragging across one face of the rock. And what's even better is when you can get two wedges split apart and drive one right through the middle. Um, it's, you know, it's fairly easy pounding in the grand scheme of things and uh, you're not wasting your energy quite so much. But uh, wedges are great. Uh, these particular ones over here on the left come from Trow and Hold in, in Vermont. It's a little family run business. Uh, I like to give them give them props because there's not too many people making things like this anymore. So uh, definitely check them out. I'll put their name down at the bottom. Over on this side are a bunch of old leaf springs from cars that have been cut down to various shapes and lengths. I personally find these two long ones, the red one and the one beside it, to be a little bit too long. Uh, they get too much bounce when I hit them with a the hammer, so I actually don't use them. I'm considering cutting them in half. Um, but they're, it's a really good quality steel if you don't overheat it when you're cutting it and shaping the tip. Uh, they are very, very, very hard to break. Um, also very, very hard to cut and grind, but uh, don't, don't turn it blue. Don't get it too hot when you grind it because it'll, it'll weaken up the steel, make it brittle. Uh, crowbar, this is one of my most used tools actually. Uh, every time I get a crack 
something's starting to look loose, I try it with the crowbar first and see if I can pry the rocks apart. Uh, save you a bunch of pounding and uh, pounding and beating. And uh, last but not least is uh, the six foot pry bar, which I bring with me. And that's you know when you're really moving some big pieces, like I had in the video where I was moving the slab on the floor. And uh, my sledgehammer isn't in here; it's uh, out in my out in my shed. I didn't feel like trudging through the snow to get it. So that's some of the heavier tools you would use. And some of you might think that going, taking a vacation to pound on rocks with a hammer is a kind of a sadomasochistic thing. And for those of you that don't really think that sounds like fun, you can also use sifters. Uh, this is a two-layer sifter that I built. It's got a uh, quarter-inch chicken wire on there, a quarter-inch uh, wire mesh, welded wire fabric, and window screen down at the bottom, aluminum window screen. And they nest together so I can put a shovel full of sand in there and uh, sift and all the sand falls through the bottom as long as it's dry enough and you get obviously two tiers of, of sorting and it uh, works out really great and kind of double your efficiency when you're sifting and you have some nice little stones to pick through. So for those of you that don't really feel like swinging a hammer um, or if you maybe have kids that you don't really want them swinging hammers yet and they're afraid they're going to smash their thumb, if you go to Crystal Grove there's some nice piles of uh, material you can sift through and uh, save your back. So a, pair, a little sifter like this, a kid's sifter for the beach, something like that, and a little garden shovel would really be all you need. So if this sounds like too much work but you really want to find some crystals anyways, that's a definitely good alternative. And honestly, at the end of the week, we uh, typically go camping for a week, and by the end of the week, your arms are so tired that half the swings you make are landing on your hands and you barely, barely swing the hammer anymore. So a little day of sifting at the end is a nice way to wind down and relax a little bit. up the final package. It's a nice little husky bag that we found. I just put my chisel rolls down on the bottom, and you can see it's got a nice center divider with a whole bunch of slots. I put all my all of my wedges in. Got all sorts of little pockets in there that I haven't even used yet. And the big wedges go on the bottom, the hammers go on the bottom, and it just about fits my crowbar. It kind of pokes out when I zip it up. Um, I use the big side pouches to put uh, crystals in as I find them in the day. This one over here has got my, my glasses in it right now, but that's where I tuck my crystals as I find them so they don't get banged up through, through my tools. So uh, it gets really heavy. There's a lot of iron in there. But I usually, it has a shoulder strap, I carry this on one arm and sledgehammer on the other arm to get a little balance. And uh, that's my kit.